Hey, what is up YouTube? It is Peter here. I'm bringing you another video because I'm trying to assist and help out people that leave comments and complaints on my previous videos, particularly the fixes on why they cannot run certain games or why those fixes flat out did not work for them. Quick disclaimer though before I get into it, um, this video is just mainly going to contain some showcasing on what these mean, like some explanatory um, segments on what settings mean. Um, some general stuff I might be wrong so don't take anything I say as an absolute truth I've learned this over just you know the 10 to 11 oddish years of just messing around with systems trying to play different games I'm in no way shape or form an expert on this this is just my opinion and I've carried this with me as I've tested things so by all means if you have a different opinion or you just know better contact me or leave a comment in the comment section below I would appreciate any constructive criticism, but if you're just going to get mad and rage at me, you know, I'm not really going to respond to that. Um, so yeah, anyway, let's get right into the meat and potatoes of this video. So system requirements, you have your minimum and you have your recommended. What does this mean? Minimum system requirements are considered the bare minimum settings in the game that will run at 30 frames per second. Emphasis on 30 frames per second. So if you had all these settings, like for example, I have Dark Souls 3 pulled up here. If you have all these settings right here, all these, if you meet all these requirements, you should be able to play the game at the absolute lowest setting. You know, the game should launch. The game should open. It will run don't expect anything more than 30 frames now you might be asking well that's not true because I've had games where I've had the minimum settings and I've gotten 60 FPS that's 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 great chances are you are hitting the minimum requirements but you're not the average um, consumer now what, what, what do I mean by that so minimum and recommended are both an average of what they expect you to have in order to run the game but that average isn't based on an average of computers, it's based on an average of computer users. So, for example, when I boot up a game, I try to make sure there's as little running in the background as possible. Unless I've played the game enough times or I know that it's not going to be that much of a bog on my, on my system or the performance isn't going to, you know, go up or down based on what I'm doing. So, for example, um, if you boot your system and you open your browser, you open your music player, you have a bunch of uh, apps running in the background and you still meet the minimum requirements, chances are you'll be able to play the game on these settings that they said with 30 FPS. Emphasis on 30 FPS, again, because that's where most of these settings draw the line, is 30 FPS. Can you, pl is it playable? To most people, 30 FPS is playable. Personally, I don't accept anything lower than 60. I will go as low as 57, 58, mainly because I personally can't see the difference, but I try to stay in that 60 FPS ballpark. Some people don't see the difference from, you know, 30 to 40 to 50, that's fine. I know if the further away you are from your screen, the, I'm sorry, from your screen, the less obvious it is, but personally for me, I can tell a difference. Okay, moving on. Recommended. You follow these settings that they post, again this is the Dark Souls 3 settings, and you should be able to run the game in the highest setting possible at 30 FPS. So that, that, that is exactly what that means. It means you could crank up all the detail, all the graphics to max, and you should have 30 FPS. Now this doesn't mean that you can't achieve 60 more or less you can if you tweak a few things but cranking everything to ultra and playing the game recommended should get you 30 FPS as you know again emphasis on 30 FPS so I'm gonna go into exactly what these different things mean for you guys out there that have been asking so your processor i3 i5 i7 I'm not too f too familiar with the AMD coding um, but as far as Intel is concerned, your i3 is your base consumer processor. Um, very light, doesn't have hyper-threading, at least most do not have hyper-threading turned on. Some can be like dual cores, 
In fact, I think most of them are dual cores. Um, i5 is hyper-threading enabled dual core, so it's still two physical with a theoretical four. i7 is four cores physical with hyper-threading, so that's like four physical and eight theoretical. What this means is you can multitask if you were to draw like a chart. At the bottom of the chart, the smallest amount of multitasking you can do is the i3, followed by the i5, followed by the i7. Now, there's that argument that some games don't use hyper-threading, which is true. For any game, I would say, that was created before 2009. The thing is now, the truth is most games will bounce between cores and the resources. So the more cores you have available, the more cores that are stable, you know, the less chance of you running into a bottleneck from your CPU. This doesn't mean that, oh, if you have an i5, you will not get as high of a frame rate as someone that has an i7. While it is true for certain things, the discrepancy can be maybe one frame per second, if even that. Sometimes if you really get down to it and you get down to the nitty gritty of the actual FPS, you can see like 0.1 of a frame difference. I know this is all talk, I'm not actually showing you numbers, but just bear with me. Um, so, going down to memory. So why this is, this is also kind of as important as the processor because it all takes into account 30 FPS, what you're doing at the time. If you're booting up Windows from a fresh boot and you don't run any background apps, you're going to have lots of RAM available. Windows, Windows 7, Windows 8, um, obviously Windows 10 is more optimized now. You may use one gig of RAM, about a gig of RAM booting up. And you can usually, you know, just go into the... Um, task manager, go under um, your per your performance tab and look at how much memory you're using. I have 32 gigs of RAM. As you can see, 3.5 gigs are in use and 27.8 gigs is available. Um, now just because it says 3.5 is in use doesn't necessarily mean I have anything right now using 3.5. I'm also recording, so that is a fact, so just take that with you. but. For most people, just booting clean boot will use about a gig, like 0.5 to a whole gig of RAM, which automatically means you have only 3 gigs for gaming and 7 gigs for gaming. So then you open your media player, your web browser, your antivirus is running in the background, or maybe it's not, but you know, your, your Windows um, services are running in the background, updates, you name it, stuff that just run automatically have a chance to pull on your RAM. That's where this comes into play. So if Dark Souls says minimum requirement is 4 gigs, chances are running on the minimum settings, Dark Souls is probably going to use a gig to 2 gigs of RAM. Meaning that you have that extra 2 gigs for your system. They're taking into account that the average user will have other applications running in the background. They're not taking into account that you're booting the game from a fresh, sorry, you're booting your system and running the game from a fresh boot. They're assuming it's middle of the day, you get home, stuff's on your computer already running, you want to listen to some music, watch some videos, and you want to play Dark Souls. That's what they're assuming for the minimum and the recommended. The recommended is the same thing, except it's beefier if you want to get that 30 FPS on ultra settings. That's pretty much it. And I hope that clarifies the whole processor memory thing. Again, I might be wrong. Take that with a grain of salt. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Or if you know any better, you can leave a comment in the comment section below. Okay, so the next part, this, the biggest debate is the graphics card. And I have a lot to say about this because I've personally messed this up so many times. And I hope I don't make this video too lengthy, so let's try to get like a structure going here. Okay. So most of how a game renders its content is it pulls the data from, you know, if it's stored online or if it's stored on your hard disk, it pulls the data, sends it to the processor. The processor then sends it to the video card. For now, that's changing with DX12 and Vulkan. But for now, it sends all that data from the processor to the graphics card. Your graphics card has a certain clock speed and a certain memory speed. It will store the data and then process that through the core at a certain speed. I'm not going to try to make this too complicated. Long story short, 
The faster the graphics card, the better. However, everything else has to line up properly. So if you have an SSD, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have faster, faster performance. You should obviously have faster load times because the data is being pulled so much quicker and being sent to the graphics card quicker. That doesn't mean the graphics card is processing it or, you know, managing to render it any quicker. This just doesn't work that way. If processors could render graphics, they would be like, you know, a helping part too. So like, you know, you have your Intel HD graphics, stuff like that. That would help, but that's not what the processors are for. The graphics card is like a giant processor designed just to render 3D graphics or 2D graphics. So if you have, for example, a game that says the recommended is a 750 Ti, again, that means minimum settings, 30 FPS, and you're trying to play on your GTX 735, I mean, and you're getting less than 30, I mean, chances are, you know, just by looking at it, you should know what I'm talking about. You're not going to get the best, you know, performance at minimum even. So I pulled up my NVIDIA control panel. I'm going to go to system information and look at the clock speed and the memory rate. So I have two 780Ms in SLI. A lot of confusion exists between, oh, if you have SLI and you have four gigs on each card, then you have eight gigs total. That's incorrect. If you have 4 gigs on each card, because they're running in SLI, that means you have 4 gigs total. You do not have 8 gigs total. You still have only 4 gigs because whatever is stored on the first card is also stored on the second card and they're interchangeable. But they're also rendered at the same time. You don't have 4 gigs. Sorry, you don't have 8 gigs. You still only have 4 gigs. Again, this is the clock speed, the CUDA cores, all that stuff I was telling you guys about. You generally want to go for GDDR5 because it's a faster rendering output than most um, other cores out there. Um, so than most other types out there. Um, yeah, uh, you're going to want to get a 256-bit memory interface bus. That helps too. The memory bandwidth, the best way I can describe this is think of it as um, highways. Um, you have all this data moving at a certain speed. So let's say you have a car. The car moves at 100 miles per hour down a highway. That is your data that's going to be rendered on your screen. At the end of the highway, at the start of the highway, you know, is the CPU sending it to the process, so, so, sorry, sending it to the graphics card and then it starts rendering and it sends the car down the highway. At the other end of the highway is your monitor, your screen, right? So the car is going at 100 miles per hour. That's how fast your graphics card runs. The bridge is, say, a two lane. You can only fit two cars side by side moving down that lane. You increase your memory bandwidth. You increase from a two lane. And same thing with the memory bus um, interface. You increase it from a two lane to a three lane to a four lane to a five lane. And suddenly, you know, it's still the same 100 miles per hour vehicle. But instead of having to stack, you know, 10 in a row or in, in a column, you can stack them in a row going down at the same speed. So you will get data being rendered more f um, fluidly is the best way I can describe it. So if you've ever been playing a game and you make like a hasty turn or you turn to the right and you notice there's like some choppiness or your frame rates drop, 9 out of 10, that has to do with the memory bandwidth because it's waiting for the packet that has the new rendered screen to show up. Whereas if you're running with a larger bandwidth and you make a sudden turn, that data should be in that row of five different, you know, cars moving at the same speed. Very confusing, I know, but if you understand what I'm talking about or if you're even curious, then, you know, you kind of get an idea of where I'm trying to, um, where I'm trying to go here. So settings i'm not going to get into that in, in this video i'm not going to get into what you can optimize i'm just going to cover all this direct x version pretty standard if you don't have a modern graphics card chances are you're not going to be able to play this game um again this is dark souls 3 stuff like that so if there are any questions that you guys have uh please feel free to like you know leave a leave a comment I will try to um, answer them as quickly as possible. If you don't know how to check your system, 
and find out exactly what your system requirements are and or or rather how they meet up you can always in the search bar and this is when this is windows 10 but in the search bar you can just type in dx diag so that's d dx diag there we go dx diag pulls up your di your diagnostics tool for for directx it should tell you you know your processor, your RAM, your page file, your DirectX version, and your video card. 9 out of 10 though, this will not be the most accurate. It'll give you like the approximate memory, the um, screen size, the name of your video card, but it's not going to tell you if you have one card or two cards. You should know if you have one or two cards, but it's not going to tell you that. And it's not going to tell you your dedicated video, you know, RAM, memory, stuff like that. But it should tell you at least the name of your card. So you can compare that on a scale. And there are lots of tools on the internet that should help you find, like, you know, what is my performance for this range if I decide to run this game. You, know, you can go to, say, um, 3D Mark 11 scores for, I don't know, GTX 770. And, you know, correct that. The first one should tell you, hey, you know, for DTX 770, here's the average score. And, you know, you go ahead and get the benchmark. Now, be careful when you run these. Because, for example, here, this looks like another 770 score. Um, notice how the graphics score is 12,000. The P score is 11,000. But if you go here, it says the P score is 11,000. This P score... This graphic score here relates to this score, not this. This this performance takes into account everything else. So don't get too confused with that. Just letting you guys know. All right, so that ends it for this video. Um, I think I'm going to stop things there. If anyone else has any questions or anything they want me to discuss, please leave in the comments. Um, I'll try to make it like flashier next time if anyone wants me to keep doing videos like this, if you want me to test out any video games. Again, my system is not the best system. It does what it does and I use it efficiently. As in, if I know a game like Witcher 3 is going to be in, I'm going to be playing Witcher 3, that means I don't have any background apps running, maybe Skype or TeamSpeak, but that's about it. I don't leave a web browser open. I don't leave, you know, other games open. So if you're having issues and you feel like you should be able to run the game, like you meet the minimum or you meet the recommended, chances are there's something bogging down your performance. It could be your processor. It very well could be your RAM. Chances are though, it's probably a background service something you need to shut off something you need to you know reboot or you know so that it runs fluidly now windows and some of these computers are built to run at the same performance over and over and over or at least within the same range of performance now i've noticed simple things like cleaning out my my vents or my fans increase my performance by like two percent it's possible you know there could be a thermal threshold and you're getting too close to that thermal threshold too quickly so the system throttles it's very possible you know little things like that check your system make sure that everything's cleaned out again video is getting too long leave a comment if you want me to discuss anything else in, in like specifically aside from that thanks for watching uh, if you like the video give it a like uh, share it favorite it whatever you want to do and just give me feedback I appreciate it you guys have a nice day or whatever it is you're doing. Catch you guys later.